Boy, we've been having a Holy Ghost good time this morning, ain't we? Amen. 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 Oh, man, let me. Just got three. Um... Did I leave my glasses on there? Oh, here they go. I tell you what, boy, Mr. Tommy, you, you, you're on point. Yeah. We got um, three quick scriptures that we're going to go through right quick. And we pray we're going to jump right into the word. Because as we are on this series, as we're talking about um, servanthood and growing and developing servant leaders and servant disciples in the kingdom of God, it's important that we capture all aspects that contribute and grow our servanthood. Amen? Amen. Okay, first scripture is going to be Hebrews Chapter 6, verse 1. Just, 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 just that one verse. Then the second one is going to be my favorite book, James. Chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. And then finally, Philippians 3, 12 through 15. When you get those scriptures, please say amen. I know with the electronic thing, I, I was going to try and navigate that, but uh, I ain't want fat finger none, so I'm just going right to the written word. When you get it, say amen. amen. Okay, the first scripture, let's read together. We are reading Bible, by the way, is the New King James. Therefore... Leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Hallelujah. Then over to James chapter 1. Can you get it? Say amen. Let's read together. My brethren... Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And then finally, let's jump over to Philippians 3, 12 through 15. <clears throat> Not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, is a word again, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind, and if in anything you think otherwise. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is alive and it's true. Lord, as it penetrates us today, Father God, allow your servant to decrease so you could increase, so that you get the glory, you get the honor, and you get the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, as we um, go over these scriptures, you kind of guess where, which direction are we rolling into. As we develop into kingdom servants, if you will, as kingdom citizens, you know, Turning Point have a heavy calling on us. We've been prophesied over to do some great things. And I believe we are, and we have been doing great things, but we're going to do greater. Remember the song that said, the greater is coming? Amen. I, I really believe that. Okay. But as we develop this year of focused vision, and we get 
into doing the things that God has called us to do, to not only serve the kingdom and this community, but serving him individually. It's important for us to harness those things, those traits in each of us that need to be in us for us to be effective servants. Does that make sense? Amen? Because one thing that, that, that is without a doubt, one of the biggest problems in the world is immaturity. Would you agree with that? You know, we read in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, he said, let us, the other, the other way that was trying to say, let us go on to maturity. God's will is for every person and personal growth to move towards maturity. Not to be stagnant in one place. Because when we do that, we're doing what? We're chasing our tails, and you don't go nowhere. Okay? So, we have to know what constitutes that move towards perfection, that move towards maturity. Now, we know that which is perfect is the Lord Jesus. He, is the only, he was the only one that walked this earth as a man and was able to be the, 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 the sacrificial lamb for each and every one of us. The blood of bulls, you hear us say it all the time, the blood of bulls and goats couldn't do it. It had to be done to the person in the Lord Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. God sacrificing himself for us. Had to be that perfect being. See, y'all tracking with me. So what maturity is not? Maturity is not age. Age ain't nothing but a number. Amen? Because we know you got some folks that are, as the word said, mature in age and have the mind of a child. We see it manifested in so many different ways throughout society today. So we do know that maturity is not age. Maturity is not appearance. You can't look like you're mature. Or you got it all together, man. Like, look at a perfect family. Look at a, No! Man, you could dress, you could be Mr. GQ or Miss GQ. I don't know if I, 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 don't know if I said the wrong magazine, I, you know. <laughs> But anyway, I mean, you can look the part. Yeah. Don't a lot of people do that? We call it fake in the funk, right? Yeah, you can look the part all day, but don't have an ounce of fruit in you. Right? So we know maturity is not appearance, but a lot of people get bamboozled by appearance sometimes. Want to be with the in crowd, right? Because they look good. What looks good is not necessarily good. It's not achievement, what you achieve. You could be the most accomplished person. You could, my goodness, I could think about all the things that people have accomplished. People with big names. And you go and you open up that book that they call their life. And you see all kind of mess in it. Accomplishment, it's not maturity. Academics, is not maturity. You could be the most learned person in the world, have all the degrees, but for whatever reason, you never allow God to cultivate the mind, and you have nothing. So what does God say maturity, maturity is? It's attitude. It's attitude. Dear Moody made this quote. He said, character is what you are in the dark. I like that. What you are in the dark. Think about that for a minute. See, ain't no mirror to look at. Ain't no reflection to look at. See, recognition is what people say about you. Character is what God says about you. See, people can only talk about what they recognize, what they see, they outside, right? So how do we measure spiritual maturity? 
Not by comparing yourself to other people, but by comparing yourself to the Word of God. What does the Word say? We went over some scriptures this morning. It tells us we can't be stagnant when we are. We got to keep moving towards maturity. Developing those attributes. That's going to make you what God called you to be. That way you can be effective when he calls you out to do what you're supposed to be. You wouldn't bat a second eye when we have a bunch of folks in here. Where we, oh, by the way, I made a comment about um, sometimes you never know how close he may be to being in the same situation. But as he develops us, we know it's, it's second nature that, hey, we need to come out and do something, be a part of this. Because it's what God character development in us is all about. So, so as we talk about maturity and, and moving to a perfection, the word used here in James, James is one of my favorite books. James tell you about yourself. Right? It, it, it's like a handbook about how to be the person God calling you to be. Amen? And the Greek word for maturity is teleos, teleos. And it's used five times in each of those verse, in each of those chapters in James. And the word means to mature, complete, or perfect. Remember, it's used five times in the book of James, in all five chapters. So y'all tracking with me. Like I said, James is a book, a manual on how to grow up and be mature. So, let's discuss, I'm not going to hold you too long, five marks of spiritual maturity in relation to growing as a servant. Amen? Amen. A mature person is positive under pressure. Positive under pressure. The word says, my, breath, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So, what, what exactly do you mean, Pastor, about positive under pressure? <laughs> oh, I could go some places with that, boy. I spent 30 years in the Navy. You can probably hear me say a little bit, but that's where a lot of my, uh, you, know, you, you know, a diamond gets to be a diamond from that pressure, right? So when, 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 when you are positive under pressure, you can't let the things that come your way steer you from what God is calling you to do. Amen? So how you react to problems in life. See, Christianity is life, not religion. You understand me? Christianity is life, not religion. How we live in our life for... Look, we were bought with a price, folks. And because we were bought with the blood of Jesus, it's incumbent on us. Not only to walk according to our calling, but to move towards that perfection piece that he's calling us to do. Amen? Amen? So, when the pressure comes, that's not the time to rail off and let a few choice words come out your mouth. Uh, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> let me share this with you. I was on my way over to see Sister Sharon yesterday, and... Y'all know I am about vehicles. I like to keep them clean and all that, keep my stuff looking good. And um, I, was, I was at the stoplight there just before Harris Teeters. And, you know, we were over here working, so I was kind of in a bit of a deal, a little bit tired. All of a sudden, I got a boom. Somebody done ran into the back of the truck. What I'm talking about here was a real test for me. <laughs> See, because rather than I come out, no, first of all, I'm six foot five, 310 pounds. 
coming down out of a truck with a little young guy like that and his little buddy watching you coming, I can't tell you what kind of bodily movements this kid probably had. <laughs> but the first inclination for me, I went right back there to see how much damage was done back there. But my truck was fine. His car wasn't. <laughs> you know, the, the bumper ran right into the towing hitch part of the truck. I probably could have towed him with it, <laughs> you know. But I didn't go off on the young man. Rather tell him, I said, look, man, you okay? I'm okay. I may not be later on, so let's exchange some numbers right now. Let me know your insurance, just in case we have to contact and get your name, and it will be fine. I'm going to even call the police. Some folks will say, Bones, you should have took pictures, you should have called the cops, got a report and all that, but you know, I walk by faith, not by sight, and I go by what God is telling me. It may seem silly to some people, but it's what God tells me to do, and I am obedient. Okay? So that's all it took. And the kid, you could tell he probably going to get in, in, in trouble with his parents. He was like, whoo, he be, man, he low, look. He was beat red, man. I mean, I thought he was going to pass out back there when I walked back in the first place. But after I took the, the, the approach I took to him, you could just see the whole calm just flush right over him. And text, I uh, did a butt text by him. But he texted me, asked me, are you okay, sir? Folks, you don't know how much and what it takes sometimes to just walk according to how God is calling us to be. Had I been a little bit of more of a baby Christian, he'd have seen the old bones real quick. I probably would have jacked him up. <laughs> you know? But God changed me. Hallelujah. He is bringing me to that point where I need to be. Glory to God. Mm-mm-mm. See, James 1, 12 said, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Was I tempted to get out of that truck and raise Cain? Oh, absolutely. But I had to go away because what? I'm moving towards what God is calling me to do. Does that make sense? Second thing, a mature person is sensitive to people. Sensitive to people. In James 2.8, say, if you really fulfill the royal law according to Scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, and you do well. You don't just see your needs, but you see your neighbor's needs. Folks, it's so easy for us to get so consumed with us. <coughs> Tell the truth. Yeah. It's easy for us to get consumed with what's going on with us. Something that happened that really shook me with that, when we talk about your neighbor. We had a fire in the neighborhood some years back. Um, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. My son was out there yelling and screaming. We all got up and went out. It was 4th of July. And I think the couple in there, they were smoking or something like that, but they were, they were all drunk. But they had fireworks over there, and I guess it may have fell asleep. Cigarette caught up, hit the fireworks, the house went up in flames. And uh, the young man didn't make it out. The paramedics barely got the young lady out, but she went on, checked out at the hospital later on. And you know, one of the things that hit me, Living there all them years around them neighbors, I did not know them. You know? I didn't know them. And that hit me because when we say we love our neighbor, it doesn't necessarily mean your neighbor, neighbor, your fellow man. Amen? Amen. Somebody moving in, nothing wrong with going, neighbor. hey, my name is Bones, well, I'm right down the street. You know, I hope y'all welcome to the neighborhood. Hope y'all got settled in. You know, hit me up if you need anything, here's my number. At work, hey man, look, I'm running down um, to McDonald's. You want me to bring you back something for lunch? Oh, oh let me help you. You, you. you seem like you got a lot of stuff here coming out of Walmart. Yeah, where, where's your car? Let me help you put this stuff away. You know? Those expressions could change somebody's life. They could ask you, why are you like that? Then you have an opportunity to witness to them. 
Amen? Mm -mm. Matthew 25, 41 to 45 says this. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you curse, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. I was naked, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also answered him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick in prison and did not minister to you? Ha. Then he will answer them, saying, verse 45, Assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Food for thought, right? You know, we get caught up with the last part of the verse. If you have not, if you have done so on the least of these, you have done so unto me. If you did not do it to the least of these, you have not done it unto me. But it's all the other things we have to be mindful of. That counts. We may not think it counts, but it counts. No matter how small the effort is, it's big to God. Ah. Thirdly, a mature person has mastered his mouth. Mm. <laughs> James chapter 3, 2. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble... In the word, he's a perfect man, able also to bridle a whole body. Hmm. Now, when you go to the doctor, what do they do? If you stick your tongue out, right, they do that check to see what's going on with the rest of your body, right? Well, God has to do that spiritually as well, do that tongue check. You see... We used to have a saying in the Navy, and y'all heard me say this before, loose lips sink ships. Well, loose lips destroy lives. Self-control comes from tongue control. James 3.3 3, 3, 3 says that our tongue is like a rudder. You know what a rudder is, right? That's what you have in the back of the ship. It stairs there anyway. Big old aircraft carrier, little old rudder. Make that how much thousand ton displacement move all over the place, even through going through the, um, it's amazing to me when we go through the, uh, what we call the ditch. Help me out there, Sherman. What we call the ditch again? What we call it? The Suez Canal. Yeah, and I should know, because I've been through that thing a couple of times, and I always have a high anxiety level when we go through there. A big old carrier ain't supposed to be up there. You've seen land on both sides this close to you, and folks walking around with stuff over there, <laughs> but it's another story. It's a bit in a house's mouth, a smock, a snake, a spring, all those things. Have you ever heard anyone say, I just say what's on my mind? Well, the Bible says that's immaturity. Folks, just like we could bless somebody with our tongue, we could curse them as well. Just like we could build somebody up, we could break them down. Just like we could reassure somebody, we could demean them. Y'all ever seen that Geico commercial? What they say, Pinocchio will make a lousy public speaker. <laughs> you saw the look on the dude's face? But he's like, I see a whole bunch of you that has potential. You have potential. And his nose got long. And the dude's head just sank like that. Those little words just tore the man up. We have to be careful about our oration, folks, how we speak to people and relate to people. Look. 
You don't know how far somebody is from going over the edge. One simple word you may do, I mean, the name we talk about that, especially during the holiday times, where people deal with all kinds of issues. We don't know what's inside of a person, so it's incumbent that we stay tuned to what the Spirit is saying in our lives and what to say, what to do, what to think. Because if we don't do that, you may have pushed somebody over the edge and you don't even know. You may have caused somebody's self-esteem to drop to the bottom of the floor. So if we're conscious about bridling that tongue, having a tongue control that the word of God is talking about, we could do much more good than harm. Matter of fact, we'll be awesome. But it got to be controlled. Amen? Amen? Ephesians 4, 20, I like to always add scriptures to those things. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Something we should be practicing, Right? I mean, let's face it, depending on what side of the bed you get up in the morning, it's going to depend on where your day is going to be like and what you say. So it's so important to spend that time with the Lord. Get your instructions for what you're going to do that day. And not only get the instructions, but live them. You see, obedience is an issue we have in the body. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But we disobey and don't even know we disobey sometimes. The spirit may tell you to do this, this, that, and the other. But we end up doing our own thing sometimes. Amen. And I love this, James 1, 26. If anyone among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. A mature person is a peacemaker, not a troublemaker. <laughs> so where, where are we going with that one, right? Folks, when you combine some of the things we talk about, especially in speech, we don't know what kind of stuff we stir up. You know, a little chatter here, chatter there? That is so disruptive. You know why that is? Our pleasures within ourselves war against who we are. You realize that? Can we let the things that we want to do supersede who we really are in God? James 4 1 says, Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? A mark of a mature person is the lack of conflict in his or her own life. Be a conflict resoluter. I know it ain't quite a word. That's my word. Purpose to be the one to smooth things over. Now, when I say that, it doesn't mean that you have to tolerate mess. You copy? But it means because you're in tune with God, you're going to hear from God to be able to say and do the right things that could stop something from escalating. Whether it's in home, whether it's on the job, or whether it's in the body. Oh, let's not walk around thinking that we don't have issues in the body that don't escalate. That's why we ask that we people forgive. When you hold on to stuff, after a while, guess what's going to happen? Somebody's going to explode and it's going to escalate the way it don't need to be, you know. Rather than meeting where you're supposed to be, you get with your brother, your sister, you hash it out. Then the next thing you call in the church. Resolve conflict at the lowest level possible. That's being a peacemaker. When you allow it to just quell and grow and, oh my goodness, next thing you know, you got people running all over the place with a, like a chicken with a head cut off. Excuse my analogy, but... You know, that's the quickest thing. Um, I, grew up, I grew up in the Caribbean, and 
you know, place of, uh, where I live in St. Thomas, we sell our own chicken dinners on Sunday, but certain things you have to do to be able to get to it at that point. We didn't go to the grocery store and pick it up, just so you know. Yeah. Okay. Mark of a mature person is the lack of conflict in his or her own life. Doesn't mean that conflict is not going to come. It's what you do when it do come. How you resolve it. How you pray through it. And a lot of that could be resolved with just love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. I was talking with Minister Eddie. And you know, in, in Revelations 2, they talk about forgetting our first love. Mm-mm-mm. Folks, love conquers everything. You hear me talk about agape love and filial love. I like, and I'm going to keep talking about it till I leave this earth. It is so important. It's such a powerful entity, not utilized as much as it should. So there are two sources of conflict. The first is selfishness. You ask, you do not receive because you ask and miss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. See, we need to turn selfishness into selflessness. Woo! And the second, man, uh, should you go here? Yeah, I'm going to go there. Second is judging others. The first is selfishness as sources of conflict. Second is judging others. Who are we to judge? James 4, 11 to 12 says the following. Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? So why should I not judge? I'm not God. Only God has all the facts. None of us don't. Neither do I. I don't know one's motives. God does. Okay? So when we go out from the outside, from the cat bird seed looking in, and start saying this, that, and the other, and placing labels on folks, be careful. Be careful. You know, the young folks got it kind of twisted. They, they like to say, you judging me. It's not necessarily that, folks. It's a, it's a difference. You can judge people's actions. You don't judge a person. That's not up to you. Because actions could spur some kind of a response. So you got to sit there and make sure that you're not falling into whatever it is that that person is trying to get you to do or say. Make sense? Ah, number five. A mature person is patient and prayerful. James chapter 5, but I love James, like I said, verse 7. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of, of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord. The Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Mmm. Mmm. My goodness, patience. I got to make a confession. I'm not where I want to be yet. Amen? Amen. But boy, I struggle with that sometimes. I remember my mom used to tell me when I used to act up, take the faith of Job to deal with you. I ain't know what I quite meant until I got older and I started having kids myself. <laughs> but patience is a virtue that we all need to capture. It really is. 
Because without patience, things go right by you, right over you, and sometimes right through you. Mm -mm -mm. And I love, I talk about being prayerful. I love James 5, one of my favorite chapters. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. How many of us, when we get up doing our morning devotion, we spend time just praying for your congregation? Praying for the country. The country needs prayer right now, by the way, folks, big time. This is an election year. Praying for your co-workers. Said so the effect and fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it didn't rain. They rained on the land for three years. Six months. Then he prayed again. And heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. Oh boy, I could go all over the place with that. Mm -mm -mm. But that's for another time. Folks, you hear us make a call for prayer in this house. And we are a praying church. We have learned it from the best there was, there is, in how effective being a praying person is in the person of Dr. Mack. It's a praying man. And I don't think we could ever talk about encouraging us as a body to keep praying and praying and praying and praying some more. You can't, how many of us think we could pray enough? Raise your hand. I know it was a trick question. That's okay. <laughs> Pray without ceasing. In chapter 5, consider this. Patience was used four times and prayer was used seven times. A person is patient and prayerful. Now, I want you all to ponder those five things a bit about how you apply them to your lives and your growth in becoming who God is calling us to be as a serving church. And it's not just for the serving purpose, but who we are as Bible believing followers of Christ. It's important to get those traits overdeveloped, in my opinion. Amen? So, in conclusion, what are the tests that we're looking for now? How do you handle problems? Do you take it to the Lord in prayer? Do you seek out your other brothers and sisters, a form a little prayer group? It's easy, a lot of tell, like myself, when I could get four people on that thing, get a little conference call and pray, and not wait till the enemy kick you down the street before you decide you want to pray. How do we handle problems? Do we handle it God's way or our way? Are we sensitive to other people? Sensitive to other people's needs? Are you feeling them? See, when you're sensitive to other people's needs, you get that, no, that gnawing in your knower. Amen. You become sensitive to what they're feeling. And then you act accordingly. Ha. Can you manage your mouth? Woo. That's not an easy one for a lot of us, man. Sometimes I have to bite my lip at work. 
As I've been saying, something I ain't got no business saying when you're dealing with some of the nonsense. Thank God I'm on the down slope of that right now. But you know what? You got to manage your mouth in all aspects, not just at work, at home. That's the biggest source of a lot of conflict you have in your house. Men, we have a bad habit. Of, we dig to, hey, we going to say, well, hey, I run this house. Yeah, I run the dishwasher, I run the vacuum cleaner, I run it. Let's keep it real. You could exact so much power when you approach saying, to, saying something to somebody in genuine love and caring. See, people could smell a fake. Especially kids. But if you learn, we all do, because we all have ten, look, we all fall off that thing every now and then. That's why we have to be always repentant. Let's not get it twisted now. Okay? But you get back on right away. You ask God for his forgiveness. He's faithful and just to forgive you. Oh, his grace is everlasting. His mercy is forever. Mm. Lord, I shouldn't have said this. Because that's where most of our defiling come from, out of our mouth. Do you know that? That old adage with sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me is a lie from the pit of hell. Are you a troublemaker or a peacemaker? This is our food for thought as we grow in immaturity. How long can you wait for an answer to prayer without giving up? How long can we go to the Lord using some of the word of God to try to indict him and not having patience? Don't look at me funny. Some people do. Well, Lord, your word said that. Said that. Say, you just say, hey, just wait. I ain't done yet. I live in Kairos time. You don't. Amen? Amen. So, folks, we talk a little bit about moving on towards what God wants us to be so we could be effective an authentic servants to the most high God. Those things in our inner being that we need to cultivate, let's work on those. This is a great church. I don't mince words, folks. I'm careful about what I say. I tell you, when I went to see Sister Shirley, the first thing I tell us, when I, see, I was so proud of who we are. And like I said, the best is yet to come. See, I want, and I'm always do this almost like, it's not a public service announcement, but it's what we have to do. We look at all the land out there that we have to develop to serve the kingdom like God is calling us to serve. It calls for us to have a level of maturity that he could use us when he calling God, you don't know what God has on his mind. You don't know. You see, a lot of us may know his ways, but we may not know his will. Some people may know his will because you know what he, what he says, but you may not know his ways. And that second part is more important. You got to understand the mind of God and know how to operate. I mean, you got to get in the word every day. And I'm talking about myself here, okay? Getting it till he tell you to let up. And if you're not a morning person, do it in the evening. If you look to the scriptures, Jesus had all kinds of different times when he was getting before the Lord. We get locked into these religious boxes sometimes that boxes us in. So let's just keep on growing to where God wants us to be. 
so we could serve him in spirit and in truth. God bless you. Stand with me, please. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word today that is, Lord, I know it penetrates me. Lord, that what you have explained to us, Lord God, gave us a template in what to follow as we embrace the things you're calling us to do in this church, not just in the serving arena, but in the living arena. So, Lord, as we meditate on your word, Lord, I pray that as these scriptures that come out, Lord, we take it back and study and show ourselves approve us honor you, O oh God, to dig in even that much deeper to hear what you are saying to each individual, Lord God. We give you praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because a lot of that was all you, Lord God. Not nothing I wrote down. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to be obedient to your will. That your word will bless these people, oh God. They are a great congregation, Lord God. And Lord, we are going and doing the things you're calling us to do, Lord God. But we have to do it your way. So we thank you, Lord God, for the preach word. Thank you for each and every one of us that we call brothers and sisters in Christ. Now with all eyes closed and nobody looking around, you know, if you don't know the Lord Jesus, everything I spoke about today fell on deaf ears. But it's not too late for those ears to open up to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So who would say today, Pastor, I want to know the Lord Jesus that you spoke about today. I want to have that right relationship with him. Anybody? 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that we have all been redeemed. Mm, thank you, Father. Now, Lord, as we close out this time, we have to be sensitive to what you're saying. Some of you may be struggling in some of these areas. And you need a brother or sister to touch and agree with you. To help you get through. Some, we all need that. You need a crutch sometime to get you to the next step. And the next step till you get to the top of those stairs. One of the things that Lord does is you come boldly before the throne of grace, but you also be bold about getting with your brother or sister to help you if you're lacking in any one area. So we're going to open up the altar for anyone that needs some prayers today. Touch and agree. In any of those areas we're talking about in moving. And it don't even have to be that for anything. That's going to spur or encourage spiritual growth. So as we close out, just ask that everybody we do most of our congregating out in the foyer. Let's have this time to open up for prayer. So I invite any of the leaders to come forward and make yourself available to receive anybody that wants to touch and agree on a thing. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory, we give you honor. As we close out the same, Lord, I pray for a prosperous week for these, your people. So, Lord, as we're about to go out, we want to acknowledge that to him who sits on the throne, who has all power, all authority, and all dominion, touch your hearts and minds as we walk out this week in moving towards what Jesus wants us to move to. And to all is in agreement with that, we we'll say, Amen. God bless you as you go. I love you all.